I told a story last video about my childhood being very filled with turmoil because I spent it on the internet. It was one of the many things that occurred, but uh, specifically that video, I just explained a certain part of it. But if it wasn't clear by how I was explaining everything, habitual tendencies to start over has always been my way of escaping. Look, some of you guys still call me by my old alias still, which is HX, right? Heroic X, which is a name that actually came together from uh, after I graduated high school. Uh, at that time period, I wanted to do something in the medical field. So I thought, you know, I'm a hero because medical, you know, you know what I'm saying? So I thought heroic, blah, blah, blah. But once I graduated, I had so much going on in my mind and I couldn't let go of the past. So I started something new and that's how HX came to be. And I'm look, I'm sure some of you watching or listening, you have these old internet aliases or usernames of whatever, right? It's just forgotten about now because perhaps you go under a different name or an alteration of your name right now. The reason why I did that was for many different reasons, right? Many different things. Uh, perhaps or why you decided to get rid of your old internet alias and start new. Listen, it might not just be on the internet as well because sometimes you'll do your own version of it in real life. I personally do both. I swore to stay as Aku many years ago. I'm going to die as Aku. I'm not going to switch up to another alias or anything like that because I'm, I'm not as sensitive about what people think about me. I mean, I still am in a sense, right? But at this point, I'm tired of running away whenever I feel like people don't like me. Instead, what I'll do when I feel like people don't like me or there's something going on, I tend to isolate. I know some of y'all hate people who do this, but I'm one of those people who will be deleting everybody off their contacts list on the phone or let's say on the internet on Discord or on Steam. I literally only want to have like three people added or something like that. For some reason, having a lot of people to talk to, even though let's say we don't talk, it overwhelms me. I guess that's the best way I can say it. I don't want to hurt people. So to avoid potentially ghosting somebody and that hurting them because I've been ghosted many times. So I know how it feels. So I want to do with other people. I just keep my contacts very limited. Avoid the problem before it begins. So I just stick with Akuna. When things get tough, I'll isolate instead of trying to start something new. More or less, I'll start dwelling about solutions rather than laying in some form of depression or completely changing my environment or who I am. I'm still the same person. I just have things to deal with. I don't think anything I'm saying, by the way, is too bizarre of behavior, considering that it's very challenging to maintain your own self-esteem and your own self of individuality in a world that is so fast-paced and influential. When you are introduced to a change in your life, you may chalk up everything and I just said and say that, listen, it's just a new chapter in your life. That's your explanation for this. And such a huge change can completely be difficult for somebody who is still trying to maintain their personality. When you experience this change, it's not always the best. It's not always negative either. You know how it feels when you lose somebody or you go through a traumatic experience and you start questioning, is there something wrong with you? Do you, do you need to start over, perhaps? And do you need to recollect yourself? And that's what I mean by this. My version of recollecting myself can be present in different ways. When I go through phases of isolation, it's destructive to certain people. A few months ago, I explained all of this to somebody, right? And they told me that Aku... You should not isolate. Find comfort in other people or in friends. Don't travel through this journey that you're going through alone because there's people here for you. And I said, 
that's not when I'm used to. When I'm upset or I'm going through something, I don't like expressing my misfortune to other people. Why? Because I don't like it when people do it to me. When people start saying completely sad stuff, it irritates me. Because I already have a lot going on. So listening to your problems and depending on the person, me having to coddle you all the time or maybe give you tough love, it's just not really for me. But could you truly say I'm wrong for feeling that way? Objectively? Because hear me out. For all those people who also isolate themselves as well, is there anything objectively wrong with using this opportunity of isolation as a moment of introspection rather than dealing with other people's issues, rather than doing anything else? Now is the moment where you just sit there and you dwell about your own self and your own thoughts and you dwell about how you're going to handle the situation. Look, there's a there's a difference between dwelling about solutions to your problems versus seeking an escape, right? There's a saying that goes like, uh, in life, there's a time where you need to refrain yourself from throwing stones. Instead, you must spend your time to gather stones. Sometimes there's a need to regroup and strategize instead of letting yourself run around doing whatever you please or just living life without any sort of real time to think about yourself. I mean, hopefully that makes sense. So you have this urge to change your environment or the people around you. It's hard to respond to this urge because every moment you feel like you need to start a new chapter or be somewhere or somebody new, it creates little fragments of your own self. And although out of fairness, you can make the argument that your past collectively creates you in the future, which I concur, that is true. Everything that you went through in your past has indeed created who you are today. Constantly escaping by switching the environment that you're in or trying to start new or whatever, right, will end up in complete distortion and never really finding self-satisfaction because somebody who has this habit, do you ever truly find happiness when every inconvenience makes you want to run away? This can be for many reasons, and I will speak in my own personal experience here. Whenever I feel the need to escape or run away from a situation, a problem, or I want to run away from my life, I spent more time upset about my current conditions that I never gave myself time to truly understand my own strengths and weaknesses. Rather, my own motivations I didn't understand it either. I think I want something, but I'm too busy thinking about what I'm currently going through and it influences what I think I want. When I have time for myself in a neutral state to think about myself and how I can make myself better, it helps build a better direction of where I want to set my goals or what my next actions should be. Oftentimes, many times in the past, I have not done that. As a result, there is a constant loop of trying to find happiness, but I can never find it. However, what I can find is temporary relief. As me changing my environment or running away does not solve the problem, it only changes what I have going on. Yet, the issues remain unsolved. I said something very important a few videos back when I spoke about getting out the hospital, right? Uh, if you didn't watch the video, uh, I had to delete all my videos because the social worker and the psychiatrist were prying on the content I was uploading on my channel. 
based on topics like this, for example. Ultimately, uh, I was back in the psych ward or mental ward or whatever you want to call it in your own way. I just got out like last week. And I said in that video, despite the time uh, I was pretty much in this a jail for, quote, crazy people, I wanted to go back. But at the same time, I didn't want to go back. I'm having a sense of conflict. Ever since I've been out, everything is stressing me out again in life. It was better being in the psych ward because I didn't have to worry about anything. I was medicated. I was in my room for most of the time, minding my business. I was reading books and writing in a journal with a crayon because pens and pencils are not allowed to patients because they think that we will stab ourselves or whatever. And people, because they know I have a medical history of self-harm, I was not allowed a lot of things in there. So when I was bored, which was very often, I just stared at the ceiling and the wall the whole day. There's no art on the wall or ceiling either. It's just a white wall, painted white wall. Now, to some of you listening or watching, did I say watching or say watching? I'm not even like listening to myself. But some of you may be engaged in this topic right here. You may be thinking, how, how is that something you want to go back to, Aku? Well, because of the point I made. Although... I got used to the environment and I'm still trying to adjust back into society again. None of my issues were were like, yo, okay, I got thrown in a psych ward and none of the issues got resolved that I was dealing with still. Like I never found resolve to it. Besides the medication making me an insomniac and how I barely have emotions anymore. That's what the meds are doing for me. And that may be great. That may be good. Because uh, whatever, okay? It, 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 that doesn't mean that I feel like I can move past things, though, that made me who I am. That doesn't mean the things I went through are suddenly forgotten and forgiven. I just mentally can't react to it anymore. And for 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 those who are, like, thinking about the things... Uh, thinking about that urge to run away or start new you're gonna feel exactly like how i felt when i left you're gonna feel exactly like how i felt the many times i ran away from things in life you'll feel that feeling of joy which will be temporary and things never truly being resolved this could even be applied to other people you know like your family, you may think that you need a whole new environment and it will fix the family issues or an issue you have with your friends or lover. And it may help because a stable environment is better than an unstable one. But it never fixed what happened. Listen, it will never fix what happened to you. Despite you changing your environment or moving out or doing whatever you're thinking about. Listen, I can't tell anyone here right now what happiness is like. I really can't. Though, I can say confidently, happiness cannot be obtained by running away from your problems, at least. Happiness can only be at least moderately obtained by learning to navigate and overcome your problems. Something to think about with this topic is that a lot of us, deep down, uh, have a desire to find fulfillment. That can be defined in many ways depending on the person. However, I think what happens is when you feel this moment of what you may define or what we may define as depression, Understand that, first, I am no psychologist, so as I share my food for thought here, be wary that I may simply be speaking out of observation and my own moments of self-reflection. So, 
When there is a huge distance between fulfillment and what you actually have for yourself, I believe this can create a feeling of distaste for oneself or things going on in your personal life. Sometimes you want more than what you have in the moment and that throws you off. They say the best fix, the the best fix is that you set smaller goals for yourself, right? Since if you, if the goals are too high for you to achieve, you set smaller goals. Give yourself more leniency to trigger those chemicals in your brain when you succeed, right? Unfortunately, not everyone has the same success ratio as others. Rather, many do not handle failure for even the smaller goals very well. The bare minimum or the essentials to life, we let it weigh very heavy on us. Something so basic, like a meaningful friendship or relationship, is not obtainable to many people. And you may react to that statement, counteracting it by saying, no, Aku, everyone can obtain a meaningful friendship or relationship. That's not true because not, not, not everyone is like you or nor do they have the social tolerance for that. Oftentimes, self-sabotage plays a role in not being able to have something obtainable like a meaningful friendship relationship. Remember how I started this video about how I would isolate when I'm going through something. In my life, I do not have friends that have lasted longer than two years at least, but I've changed, obviously. I've gotten a little bit more controlled over myself. But so now I do have several meaningful friendships and relationships that are valuable to me. However, my habits of self-isolation and going ghost do aggravate people who try to form anything with me. Being self-aware of this issue, it's not very easy to just flip a switch in someone's brain, especially when they don't want it as much as others do. Although I do have meaningful connections now, I am not a social person in general. Speaking to me as a random person or even somebody, even if you're close to me, speaking to me feels very draining. Drain, I feel drained, not you. Like, I just feel like just talking to me. I, I get really tired talking to people and I get super sleepy doing any sort of social event. So yeah, it's obtainable, but it's way harder for someone like myself and many others who are also not talking to people. This isn't something you can just solve or change with people either. If somebody is not social, that's part of who they are. Don't force them or talk about or anything of the sort. This is this is what people don't do when it comes to the social aspect of depression and anxiety and all these different things and just fulfilling basic needs, of course. There are boundaries that many people don't respect. And I know I'm ranting here because I'm ranting only because people have done that to me. And I'm saying it makes things worse when you try to make or form something with me that isn't paced properly. And there isn't a reason to invest your time when I have a habit of isolating and socially disappearing anyway. So when I say that some people are frustrated with me because they're trying to form a friendship or relationship with me, and I say that it's very difficult to obtain something like this, I have habitual issues that I'm still working on. So for me, no, not everyone can do that. Some people, their habits are worse than mine, you know? Does this make sense to what I said earlier about how I don't want to hurt people? I want to avoid the problem before it starts. I'm not going to ghost you when you can't be ghosted because there's nothing to ghost because I'm not even here to begin with. And diving further into depression 
and feeling that you're not doing enough. Conversations like this and moments of introspection can also amplify the problem. Here's an example. You ever sit there and dwell about your life to the point where you feel like your actions didn't match what you said you wanted to fulfill? Now, internally, you're thinking about that. Whatever goal or desire you set yourself out to do, your actions may not match it. Therefore, it goes either two ways. You become overwhelmed or you feel empty. But you feel this way while also feeling maybe lazy or purposeless or unaccomplished. Or you're just, I don't know, not good enough. And these ideas that run through your head, they don't attribute very well to your desire to find a moment of inner peace. What we value and desire does not match our actions. That could be caused by many different things. In my cases, it could be just not having the willpower to do it which can originally be rooted by your own self-esteem. It's really a, a very horrible way to live life. It's a never-ending cycle. That's how I look at it. Uh, Self-criticism takes such a mental toll on a lot of us. It's funny because you can be severely depressed, yet you still want the best for yourself but the environment and the actions that you make don't show up for that so in your mind you're giving yourself very strong judgment very strong critique negative perception man the amount of times i talked so negative about myself in my head because i said a high, a high, a very high expectation is quite heavy. But what that does when I talk like that to myself, negative perception and so forth, I start building this personality of lacking confidence. And that is usually the case for many people without confidence as well. That internal dialogue in their head is always making poorly persuasive thoughts so that when they ever need to do something or talk about their actions, it's not that great or how they pictured it to be. Remember when we were talking about that advice people say about setting small goals for yourself? It can be so bad for some people that inner dialogue that even setting those small goals feel like an overwhelming amount of failure when you don't hit it. That's why giving that advice doesn't always make sense. If they do what you say, like they set smaller goals for themselves instead of being so ambitious, then they fail those small goals. It can go really bad. And I'm sure some of you know this too. You ever set a, such a small goal for yourself, you fail it? You're like, man. Now think about how some people feel with the extremely harsh mind state where they start like attacking themselves like mentally. I, I listen, yo, know, imagine knowing that you're setting very tiny and easy goals for yourself and you screw that part up too. You know what I'm saying? This is why depression and self-esteem and confidence are such complex topics. Nothing ever properly fits everyone. And look, there's nothing wrong with trying stuff to make yourself or make your problems uh, less impactful, right? To whatever is going on here. But we should always consider what makes people tick. We can endure this challenge in life as I said before, I believe most people have this innate desire to do better, but because you know you're going through something with your mental health, you basically do your best to overcome it 
Or maybe you choose to never address it until it gets too bad. That's kind of where I find myself often. I don't like talking about my problems or what I'm going through until it's like at its worst state. I keep my mind distracted by working or doing other activities. It's therapeutical, but this is this is another way of escaping considering that when everything turns back to normal and I'm not distracted, I'm not working, I'm not doing anything like that, suddenly things are dogpiled on top of each other. All of a sudden now here comes all the emotions that start rushing in here. Look, this overcoming need for your depression or whatever to go away is making you unwell at the same time because you may think to yourself in reflection, what would life be like if the depression wasn't there? If anxiety wasn't there? If any sort of issues weren't there? I, myself, crave wanting to know what that truly feels like. And I think that's okay because it doesn't mean we're giving up yet. We just know we got something to pull us down while we're trying to live life. You know, for those who experienced this, or for those who once experienced this, you would know that depression is not a state, it's not just a state of sadness. It's a state of psychological fatigue which coexists with other forms of hopelessness that make life harder than it's supposed to be. Rather, it pulls you out of any sort of engagement of activities or actions because it takes your motivation away. With everything I said so far in this video, it can be made quite clear that depression cannot be resolved as easy as people may suggest. Even though social activities, working out, and finding hobbies can distract your mind. It is difficult to get too involved with that stuff due to depression already giving you fatigue and lack of motivation to do these things. It makes it a wandering question of how do you even truly break free from this cycle? That is what I meant by that cycle when I said that this is a very horrible way to live. You don't even really know if you'll ever get an answer. And rather, it never ends for a lot of people. And since that is the case, sometimes you simply find yourself growing a sense of acceptance to the dystopian perspective I was proposing. Acceptance does not imply one has given up. It's about knowing something is there and all you can do and hope for is create a better quality life with what you have. Going back to something I mentioned earlier about being medicated, if you watched my older videos, you would be aware that I had said several times that I am not a fan of medication. That's always the last option for me if something were to happen. Unfortunately, due to the circumstances of my own conditions, I have to be on medication now. The medication does indeed remove a good portion of my emotions and makes me restless, as I mentioned earlier in the video. However, the side effects, the other side effects, have been an improvement in my quality of life. I had bad anxiety issues when I was younger which I did end up resolving through modeling, theater, and therapy. I'm not afraid to be in front of people or talk to people anymore. But like as a natural human instinct, nowadays, or at least after I had my serious anxiety issue go away, I sometimes would have little anxiety going on through me. However, now nowadays now, since I'm taking meds, one of the side effects completely nullifies my anxiety. I don't think I felt any heavy pain in my chest or any sort of like upcoming anxiety attack since I got out the hospital last week. Even though some of the things that would give me anxiety would be there, it didn't have an effect. 
that you can say is a quality of life improvement. But it sucks. This is something I have to deal with to be the closest thing to normal. But this is what I have to do as my way of accepting that I'm not just in the best state right now. I also have therapy once a week too. I said many people just call me as well. I I envy many of you who don't take any medication or therapy to find happiness. I wonder what that's like. And I hope to be like you. In any case, it does bring up the topic of balance. Even though I do accept this is currently my fate or what I have to go through, I understand that this journey is really about taking small steps back to a version or back to my version or of of normality. I found something new to help keep things a bit easier besides medication. I'm not saying I'm off the meds, but I, I found something that helps me. I've been very systematic and routine based lately. Uh, I like cleaning my room and doing stuff daily now. I'm I suddenly I'm like a super neat freak all of a sudden. Like I don't know. It just feels like I can keep things organized. It's like it's my own support system for what I'm going through. It feels like a sense of something I could control in my life since I clearly let it fall apart not too long ago. I was thinking about this today before making this video about how I started picking up this habit here about the cleaning stuff and how it made me feel. It's like a routine. It provides some sort of structure to things that aren't very structured by any other means. When I said earlier in this video, I missed the word because everything was predictable and I didn't have to deal with society and what it brings. This is like a way of me of dealing with the chaotic and instability of life in general. I don't know. Maybe it could help some of you listening or watching who also feel that you're losing control over things in life. Something simple like making your bed every single day, morning, or cleaning your computer desk, or even organizing the apps on your phone and stuff like that. It, it, it feels good to see things in an orderly space. It's also considered an activity too. I know that this doesn't resolve the things that made you the way you are, but that's one of the things about life. This is a non-escaping activity. And even though someone or something maybe may have damaged your life, at least you can always clean the cluster or mess you have, right? That's one of the more important things. I think that's the most achievable way to deal with this. Many of us are holding on to things from months ago or years ago, right? But it's like the trauma or the pain you received, it makes it very difficult to find yourself and properly cope, whether you're alone or with others. It makes it very hard. It's such a vast topic of events that could really throw you off and create trauma from accidents, violence, or even losing a loved one. Regardless, these type of events trigger parts of the brain that leave you more attentive in your stress. So now you stress a lot more simply because of trauma. And then because you're stressed, you don't appear or your actions don't show to be emotionally stable, which ends up leading to that self-criticism part mentioned earlier. Besides stress, there's also feelings of fear that can be triggered or stress and fear will go together at once. That's why it's really hard to share things with people if you went through traumatic events because it is often moments of revisiting things that create relapses. Again, I am not a psychologist, but that's why I'm a bit iffy about therapy still. I mean, it does work for many, but not everyone feels like it's a safe space to share or revisit memories that hurt them so much. It doesn't always mandate a professional either. Having an hour-long conversation with somebody who's willing to listen can do a lot for you as well. Sometimes your outlet doesn't need to be a person as well. 
It can be expressed through writing, art, or even music. It's just a matter of someone integrating it into their daily life. The girl who does my hair at the salon, I always be driving her around when she needs like supplies for a painting when she like when I when I show up there. Like that's like her hobby. She'll put like some conditioner or like some treatment in my hair and something like that, right? And put some like bag over it. I don't know what it's called. I'm so I'm sure people who go to the salon, you know that little bag they put over your your hair with the uh whatever. And she's like She's like, Andre, can you take me to the art supply store meanwhile? And I was like, I'm like, bro, give me gas money. Not really, I don't be saying that. But I would like drive her there. And I remember one time we were driving back to the salon. And she was saying that she started painting a lot again because she has more free time from work. And it's been helping her a lot. She has been trying to stop smoking as well, too, because painting feels expressive rather than getting high. See, and you know, you know what the thing about that is? I'm not going to tell y'all to not smoke or whatever, by the way. You guys do whatever you want. It's just when you do smoke, that relaxing feeling or euphoria is a short lived thing. Yes, it can last for a few hours. So you may not consider that short lived. I still think that's short lived. But it's like, it's not a long term productive solution, you know? When I mention how I'm like cleaning every single day now, that's productive. I mean, you can do that while you're high as well, you know what I'm saying? But it's still productive to clean or maybe get high and write and draw or whatever you do, okay? But in fairness too, I did say why I picked up cleaning, okay? I made the whole Samantha project, not high, but as an outlet. I don't see any long-term solution to getting high and literally doing nothing productive with it. And that's related to the topic of this, of course. So again, do what you want, but temporary relief can sometimes fall short. Look, this whole video where we talked about depression, trauma, starting a new chapter and finding outlets, it shows that each topic is very unique in its own way and isn't very black and white. We spoke about routines as well, and I shared some personal experiences that has made me feel like I can grow to be a better person. Depression can be very persuasive, and it is very uh, strong of an influence and impactful on other things mentioned in this video. The urge to escape can be a haunting feeling, but one which you may feel fills you. Fulfillment coexists with, I believe, every topic discussed here. The self-criticism creates obstacles. With these obstacles, you begin to create a world of emptiness. And if you don't accomplish what you set your goals to, even the smaller goals can have a major negative impact on you. This does not disqualify that you should still always present achievable or realistic goals for yourself first. But in my opinion, if you feel the need to lower your expectations so you can hit those smaller goals first, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone has to start somewhere, right? Furthermore, going for temporary relief, such as a complete change of environment or any other way to imply your issues have been resolved, there are healthier ways to heal. It's not just as simple as find out what works for you, at least, right? Right? It's just it works for you, but it doesn't work for the other person. It doesn't mean, you know what I'm saying? It, listen, if you know someone going through something like this you should always try your best to be supportive and understanding nothing is ever easy with this if you are the one going through it just know that these type of videos are made here to just let you know that there's always many different ways to look at this i don't really have the answers to anything really i just like to think about stuff and dwell on topics maybe it helped maybe it didn't but for now is our time we go our separate ways. That's another missed call. I 
another missed call I said let's go two different ways That's another missed call Saying that I'll never leave and stay That's another missed call Hearing back from you and I wait That's another missed call Those desires for you start to fade That's another missed call That's another missed call That's another missed call That's a 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 that's another missed call Thinking that I outgrow people